Estate Sale Adventures number 121, Sarver. So when PittsburghEstateSales.com has a Butler County sale listed, I find myself always wanting to go. This large 1987 custom home in Sarver fit the bill, and there were plenty of interesting things to find. I mean, come on, who doesn't love a hall tree? There were the usual finds, housewares, odds and ends, which I really encourage you not to glaze over. There's always something worth buying. And here's a first, the Old Testament on cassette tape. A big standout at this sale was in the basement where there were these large paintings, maybe set pieces all throughout. I just really hope they didn't end up in a dumpster. There were some other smaller pieces of art, a collection of antlers, and I really did like this chair. So when I saw it, I had to grab it. A retro recipe organizer book. It has some handwritten recipes and clippings already in it. You can find it on my Etsy at Estate Sale Adventures. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. Estate Sale Adventures number 122, Worthington. By far, one of my longest treks was to this sale in Worthington, PA. Now this is coal country. And yes, I know what you're seeing is a cement plant, but we really did pass several other nondescript industrial yards en route. So there are generally two types of sales. One staged in people's homes, and the others where they take the finds to a store or a warehouse. This one was the latter. Done by Bowser, this nursery turned estate sale store had some great takeaways. This included some amazing Hot Wheels, minerals and other stones, and a huge collection of belt buckles of every size and shape. There was also some furniture, some salvaged house pieces, and this amazing mailbox. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. Estate Sale Adventures number 123, Westview. I genuinely like this sale, not only because I found some amazing things, but the vibe was just right. Irish Catholic homes are pretty nostalgic for me. It reminds me of my grandparents. That Irish charm was all over the home. Someone clearly vacationed there frequently. There were a lot of standouts, including and not limited to this coupe glass and decanter set, this exceptional Art Deco stained glass lamp, a decent collection of wee dolls, the standard vinyl finds, the vintage kitchen appliances downstairs. But check out this first for me, an airway whirl away insector moth control device. Glass reservoir not included. I regret not getting this caddy set, but I did end up buying the collection of raccoon prints and this box full of old photographs. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe and find me on Etsy. Estate Sale Adventures number 124, Glenshaw. So I'm honestly pretty pleased with myself after what I found at this adorable 1972 ranch. The decor had that mid-century 1960s feel and was an 8 out of 10 on the grandma scale. If you haven't realized it by now, I love religious kitsch, and this sale was right up that alley. There were at least a dozen different saint statues and plenty of other Catholic devotional art. And don't even get me started on the statuary and the dolls, too many to account for in every size, shape, and theme. There were other finds too. Precious memory statues, a few vintage Pittsburgh Press newspapers, a small Angus electric organ, and its bigger brother, a full-size Lowry electric organ. Barbie's dream house definitely needed some TLC, but these life magazines were in pristine condition. I ended up purchasing a Marburger dairy milk box and this adorable dollhouse for my nieces. Estate Sale Adventures number 125, Castle Shannon. You might not know this, but estate sales can include businesses, stores, and other office buildings at times. This old American Foursquare turned office building sits along the T-Line at Killarney Station, no more than 20 feet from the tracks. The eclectic nature of the contents of this building left a lot of unanswered questions about what the space was used for. Here are just a few takeaways. There were several maps of Sweden, some interesting finds concerning the Ottoman Empire, this beautiful bronze menorah, this very nice Shakespeare statue, and a massive collection of orange carnival glass. Definitely one of the biggest I've ever seen. Lastly, this Walt Disney Donald Duck comic book is definitely strange. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe and check out my Etsy. Estate Sale Adventures number 126, Upper St. Clair. Here's a new rule. Never count out a sale when it's in its second day. It may be picked over, but there will still be things to be found. I know this to be true because I found a lot of great stuff. And it's probably because the home had so much charm, interesting details, and a lot of good taste to boot. I did really enjoy the art. There were some original pieces, this fabulous family tree, not for sale obviously, and a massive map of Southwestern PA. By far, my favorite find of the day was this entirely handwritten cookbook 
all in German. But that's not all. So I grabbed this red velvet lined leather dome box, a few decorative porcelain pieces, these two hex signs, a dolly inspired clock, a few etchings, and this insanely beautiful art deco enamel bowl. Probably keeping this one. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe and find me on Etsy. Estate Sale Adventures, weekend of April the 10th. Number 127 was a small ranch in Wilkins with a number of interesting finds, but it was the first time I saw golf tees sold this way. 128 was a newer colonial, but was virtually empty, but I did notice the pinky and boy blue, but these ones were a paint by numbers set. 129 in Forest Hills was a really nice townhouse. It had a very modern aesthetic in the living areas, a lot of indigenous artwork, and this hall tree was calling my name. The small outdoor area had some good finds too. My friend Tim spent over an hour trying to get this bird feeder detached from its pole. 130 was a picker's paradise. Now this house had several collections to peruse from. There were 90s lunch boxes, porcelain of all sorts, religious kitsch, vintage glasses, sewing machines, typewriters, and the biggest collection of all was pressure cookers. I didn't get the whole story on this one. And the gamer and me had to share the four Nintendos chilling in the corner. Number 131 in Scott was another colonial, pretty picked over. The Laura Petri kitchen had some updates, but the retro vibes were all there. Top priority, always look out for local vintage finds, especially if they're functional. This C. Palmer Pitzel iron made in West Newton, PA, definitely meets that criteria. The last stop on this productive weekend was this interesting home in Irwin. There were at least four or five buildings on this lot. The main house, a bungalow, the garage, and a number of sheds. Inside the house was pretty dated, but in a very nostalgic way. There was tons of toys and dolls. But by far, the big find of the day was this coffee table. Leather topped with side cabinets, protective glass included, and two matching end tables to boot. I cleaned it up, took it home, and the cats are already assessing the situation. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe, and find me on Etsy. Estate Sale Adventures, number 133, The Piot Mansion. At the top of a hill in Meadowlands, outside Washington, PA, is The Piot Mansion. The estate itself is surrounded by old horse farms, and the view was absolutely amazing. I've never been to a sale this big. It was over 20,000 square feet of high quality art, furniture, and everything in between. The art was definitely something special in this home. Lots of ornithology and equestrian illustrations, bronze and marble sculptures. This woman in green bronze statue was probably one of the biggest pieces of art I've ever seen at a sale. There was also a sizable pewter collection, some local fare, and these strange cowboy puppets. Now I've seen golf carts before in estate sales, but never a Rolls Royce golf cart. And of course I took a picture in it. This is a once in a lifetime situation. This place was a legit maze and the further you ventured, the more amazing it became. In the far end of the mansion is this nightclub entertaining area. It looks like it's mainly used for storage now, but it's equipped with its own kitchen, bar, DJ booth, and dance floor. If I had the budget, I might have bought this coffee table and table set, this original western painting, and this handsome taxidermy. But I would be remiss if I did not mention the closet. The holy grail of men's shoes, suits, and other clothing. Unfortunately, the shoes were too small, and the shirts were too big. If this doesn't make you want to attend an estate sale, I don't know it will. Oh, and check out this Ben's outside. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe, and find me on Etsy. Estate Sale Adventure, number 134, Soodersville. I've become fascinated by these small steel and coal hamlets along the Yakagani River. One of them, called Soodersville, has an estate sale warehouse based in an old church. Done by Caring Transitions, this place has new things each time you go. Here were just a few of the standouts. The vintage hats were very stylish, and some of them had their original boxes. There was a starter typewriter, a vintage mini Singer sewing machine, some legit Barbie swag, and the obligatory creepy clown. The furniture was very nice, and there was also local maps, too. I ended up purchasing two sets of Glenshaw glass salt and pepper shakers, this thermos lunchbox set, and this home sweet home framed embroidery. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe, and find me on Etsy. Estate Sale Adventures, Saturday, April the 17th. Number 135 was a small apartment in Mount Washington. The one wall had a silhouette of downtown Pittsburgh, another had miniature chairs, there were some toy horses, and a crap load of porcelain dolls. A doll collection is a very common estate sale find. This one reminded me of that episode of Seinfeld. And check out this local Pittsburgh fair. 
Assyria Mosque vanity plate. I just love finding things that I've never seen before. Moving on, number 136 is Conspicuous Hully House in Squirrel Hill. I've driven by this place a million times and always wondered what the addition was for. Now I know. It's this incredible art studio with a lot of amazing lighting and a legit view of the five-way intersection outside. There was an amazing kaleidoscope with interchangeable lenses, this insanely beautiful carved wood accent table, a collection of toy robots, the favorite cat by Nathaniel Currier, an ancient Underwood typewriter, and this very nice cowhide rug. And in the attic were these interesting geometric patterns made of finishing nails and thread. And things came to a head when we went into the basement. We found this wedding gown still in its unopened box, and the Squirrel Hill streetlight banner in pristine condition. And of course I bought it. Next up was number 137, a quick stop in Swissville. Another first. I've never seen so many antique ironing boards in one place. Now I normally don't care for shabby chic, but this repurposed door made into a chair was pretty interesting. Last stop was number 138 in Glenshaw. The previous owner was a pharmacist who collected modern pestles, beer steins, bells, and floor length cotton blend sweater dresses. I love the sale. Awesome and unique things, all priced to sell. And I was able to fulfill a friend's request to purchase this amazing wood puzzle of Ireland. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe and find me on Etsy. Estate Sale Adventures, number 139, Dunes Inn. When I see a sale in Oakmont, it typically jumps to the front of the list. In this case, the sale in question was the former location of Dunes Inn, a small bed and breakfast less than a mile from the famous golf course. The liquidators, Alay Estate Sales, were extremely accommodating and there was plenty to peruse. The furniture in the communal areas was exceptional. I particularly fell in love with this couch. The large dining room was also very impressive. I'm never in the market for silver, but this collection was very tempting. And god damn, look at that china closet. Finds included this assortment of turn of the century teddy bears, a framed collection of Ronald Reagan inauguration swag, this wine slash champagne caddy, a terrifying butler statue, and a few Raggedy Ann mementos. I purchased a few odds and ends, including this beautiful brooch for my board. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe, and find me on Etsy. Estate Sale Adventures, number 140, New Kensington. So one of the perks of attending sales is the opportunity to see time capsule houses, the kind of home that's displaced in time. This one fit the bill. Even though I liked it, the white piano was in really bad shape. It sounded like the soundboard was broken and 30 to 40 years of not being tuned. I wish the seller's luck on this one. Legitimate question, when was this a thing? I see embroidery like this all the time. Don't ask me to pronounce it, but this plate translates roughly to YOLO. In the basement was this extremely well-maintained wardrobe slash armoire, and I will purchase one of these caddies someday, but it's gotta speak to me. So I personally thought that this cedar chest was a really good find. Refinishing the top would be easy, and the inside was pristine. Before leaving, the liquidator pointed out the chandelier. Seeing as the house was built in 71, I have to assume that this lighting fixture is much older. But I could be totally wrong, so if you know, please comment. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe, and check out my Etsy.